using relighting, I'm gonna transform this green screen shot into an explosive scene. Here we can see the before and after results, but there's one technique in this that wasn't really possible in the past, relighting real footage. I'm using relighting to add interactive light on the character. Relighting has a lot more flexibility now that Beeble is released, and they've just released a Nuke plugin, so it ties directly into professional workflows. So before we jump into these more interesting techniques, I'm going to quickly explain what normals are and why we even do relighting in the first place. You've likely seen these colorful images. These are surface normals that define which way is surface points so the engine knows how to light it. By bringing this pass into Nuke, we can actually cheat lighting after the render is finished. Here we have the colored render, but we also have the utility pass of normals. Now I can cast light from any direction without going back into 3D. Now the natural extension of thought might be, why are we re-lighting? Why aren't we just lighting it in the first place? Oftentimes in complex CG scenes, we want to do very targeted light adjustments. And sometimes it's actually faster to do this in compositing without light linking specific lights to different objects or having to adjust shaders for many different objects. Up until now, this was only a luxury we had to do with CG. And it's a very common technique that new compositors are often using. But with Beeble, we can actually get normals from footage, which means we can actually do things that we would not be able to do otherwise. This is going to be especially useful for interactive lights or if we just need to match that green screen footage a little bit closer to the CG. Now just using this tiny setup, I have a few lights around the subject, but not quite enough for a huge CG explosion. Normally on set, you would need some DMX lights that can sync up and flash at the same time, or you might not know exactly where those elements are gonna be placed in CG later on. So here I'm running Beeble Studio, which does this AI processing locally, and I can get all my PBR passes. There's also a web portal to process it on the cloud if you want, if you don't have the GPU, or you're not worried about uploading files to a web server. Also, if you're a studio or an individual, there's a 10% off your first year in the description of this video. So here's what it looks like if we pull in all of the assets that it gives you. So first we have our source footage. We have an albedo pass, which is super interesting, by the way, because it's kind of removing the existing lighting and shadow that's there. So if you pay attention to even areas that have sort of a very rough, you know, reflective specular, it's actually removing that pretty well just off the bat. Now, the other byproduct of this that I noticed, which is very interesting as well, is that it's also flattening out the green screen substantially. So I do think potentially this could be used for keying as well to sort of ease things out if you have a tricky, very unevenly lit green screen. Uh, potentially, I haven't tested it fully on that, but if I just take a look at this, we can see there's definitely some interesting things going on in this result. Now we also have things like depth automatically. So we're gonna get all these passes we can use in different ways. It's not just for relighting, re I think. Uh, any utility pass that we can use as compositor is gonna be beneficial. So we have other things like a metallic pass. We have a normals pass, and this is the 4K version as well that comes with the studio version. So the studio version is even more detailed than the 1080p, or I guess to the uh, 2K version. So if we were to sort of compare, uh, I think I used the 2K in the comp, which is actually perfect for what I needed. But if you need that extra detail of like this little bumpiness on the surface, pretty incredible that it can even do this. Uh, we also have a roughness pass, specular pass, and just an, uh, basically a rough roto that we can get. And the roto is actually pretty decent as well. So this could be good for like a garbage mat or uh, various reasons if you just need an automatic AI roto. Now Beeble also has a new Nuke plugin. So if I load the PBR passes, essentially you will get all of the PBR passes packed into this node here, as well as a bit of a controller if you want to adjust the intensities of each of these. Essentially it's a multiplier. And what this gives you is if you plug it into a Beeble light, we have different versions here. So we have directional light, point light, environment light. So here I've just plugged it into an environment light, which is essentially an HDRI, and we can essentially relight this footage. So if we look at the source and we look at the relit version, we're getting a pretty awesome result here right off the bat. So if this was like an underwater shot, we need to like uh, adjust the lighting here. This would actually be a pretty good starting point to uh, start manipulating this from. So we can plug in a different HDRI as well, just to see the difference here. And we can see different results and we can bring this spec way down because it's too much. So I was pushing that up, but essentially spec and diffuse are separated. So if you want to work through this tool, you can, and it's a pretty good starting point. I would still uh, pull in some of these other passes and do some more traditional compositing techniques on top of this result. Given the, the fact that we have these passes, you can really dial it in. So this would be a good starting point. Now, we also have other lighting options, such as just a directional light, which is kind of like the normals, uh, rotate normals node. If you've used this on Nukepedia, where you can just essentially rotate the normals around and hit, you know, if we just want to add a light from one direction, we could do something like that, which is more directional. And uh, we could composite that on top of the original and, and do those type of things. And we also have a point light if we wanted to have sort of a, a basically a fall off. 
and we can adjust the depth, we can adjust the color, the intensity, etc. So these are all the main three lights we can use the Beeble. Now, those are the main ways to do it if you want to work through the, the Beeble plugin. But in my project, I wanted to do it a slightly different way, which is actually just a free node on Wikipedia called Reflection Buddy. It's essentially the same exact concept, except we just need the normals that ge that Beeble is generating here. So here I have the Beeble normals, and I've basically plugged in this HDRI. Here it is. And then we put it into Reflection Buddy. So this is going to actually make a mirror-like reflection rather than more of a diffused result. And the reason we want this is going to become obvious in a second, but uh, I like this uh, Reflection Buddy node because you can essentially move the reflection around based on a 2D uh, selector here. So I can click this and I can select on the normals. So if I go here and I click and drag, essentially that reflection will be moving around based on the surface of the normals here. So it's similar to the Beeble one where you can move uh, the XYZ position of the HDRI. But if you want a very mirror-like result, this is also a good option. Now, the, the reason you would want a mirrored result is, well, if you want to fake a reflection, that could be one reason, If you, just like a, a very sharp reflection like this, which is pretty cool and interesting that you can do this. But in my result, I actually wanted to reflect an explosion, but I want to reflect the explosion differently on different materials. So when you're compositing something, we need to consider what is the material that we're compositing onto. So if we look at this person, the eyes are going to be like a perfect reflection. The shirt is going to be very diffused. And then the helmet is going to have sort of a rough, essentially soft specular reflection. And so I want to be able to control the glossiness or the roughness of the reflection of different parts. And so being able to separate this out using this re reflection buddy, essentially all we need to do is take the HDRI and blur it. And that would essentially mimic a rough reflection. So it gives you a ton of control over the type of reflection you're trying to uh, essentially incorporate here. So this would be a, a rough reflection. And what's cool about doing this way, instead of just doing, let's say, a nor uh, rotate normals thing where we grade it up and you know we add a little bit of orange if we were to add explosion. The benefit of this is I'm actually using the video. So it's going to be exact to the real thing. So here's my little explosion at the end of my sequence here. So it's just blown out because it's uh, going to be completely overexposed anyway. There's like no detail on purpose. And essentially, if we look at this through reflection buddy, Essentially, we have something like this where it's going to explode at the same exact time and we can get uh, that result. Now, again, like I mentioned, what we could do is key mix a few versions of this together based on the material of the object. So what I would do is essentially blur this image and we'll get a different type of a reflection, something like this. And then we could bring the intensity of that down. We could mix that back and essentially do actual compositing techniques where we're gonna mix all those things together. So that's what I've done here. I have a few versions of this reflection that I've done, such as this more harsh one, a slightly softer one, maybe for the clothes. And then I start to go in and actually target different areas based on the materials. We wanna avoid the plastic look. This is something that with relighting, uh, if people are relighting footage, I've seen this mistake. What we wanna do is break up the highlights or boost the highlights based on what the surface is actually doing. So. For example, the shirt, we might want to break it up with some noise or just key some of the, the darker areas and break it up to make it feel more natural. It's not going to be this perfectly smooth reflection like maybe the, what the normals is giving us. So we need to go back into actual targeted corrections. And we might also have other areas that are interesting, such as maybe this ring on the helmet is going to reflect because it's much more mirror-like than the actual helmet that it's sitting on. So if we look at the real footage here, we see there are these little metal pieces that really have sharp reflections on different areas. And that's where we could either mix that really sharp specular or if it's just a frame or two, we could just blow out that highlight. But we see that that little helmet is reflecting different. So we have that control to just, you know, do some quick rotors on those areas and, and boost things or, or dim them down or break them up where necessary. So this was my first time trying out Beeble on this project. I thought it made a lot of sense given what I was working with. I do think these AI assisted workflows are going to be adopted quickly by studios, especially the ones that are giving more control to artists to like with Beeble rather than less control. If you want the 10% discount, it's in the link in the description. There's also an additional link below if you want the class for the shot, which will be coming out soon. Make sure to hit thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this. And that's about it.